Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, July 29th, and in our devotion for today, we have a reading from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and the pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, this is Psalm 150, and it's the final psalm. And as we are reminded about all that we've learned about worshiping through, with the psalms, uh, one of the truths that just keeps coming out again and again and again, we worship because it changes our perspective. It's like refocusing our vision and our attitude and our worldview. It changes us as we worship because instead of being self-consumed, uh, we become other-focused or God-focused. Worship is such an important part of that. And this last part, uh, this last psalm, uh, it ends all of the psalms with reminding us about we should praise God with everything we have, whether it be a clangy cymbal or strings or a voice, and we should praise God no matter where we are at. That is one of the biggest challenges that we have. We've been so conditioned to praising God on Sunday morning in a sanctuary that we forget that we're supposed to be praising God all throughout the week in various moments of our lives. And at times we struggle and we ask the question, well, how am I supposed to praise God when I'm reading? How do I praise God when I'm shopping? How do I praise God when I'm at work, when I'm doing these other more, what we describe as mundane acts? And that's, I, I'll admit, that's difficult. It's hard to develop a worshiping lifestyle. But a worshiping lifestyle, if that's what we're going for, is going to be one that is constantly other focused. When we are doing acts, we are reminding ourselves of who God is, and we're always using our voice um, and our decisions as ways to proclaim who God is. Um, for example, when we're deciding how we're going to spend our money, we always are incorporating how we spend it to help others. When we are deciding um, how we're going to have dinner um, and where we're going to have dinner, we can always uh, be worshiping God by what kind of conversations and who are we inviting to dinner in those moments? Who do we include in our mundane acts? How do we connect with people? How do we speak, even at work, words of encouragement that connect people to God, that um, uh, that uh, can do away with f uh, false ideas of prejudice and racism and bigotry? How do we use the opportunities that we have to show people who God is, because that's all part of worship. How do we use the moments that we have to sing God's praise, to speak on God's behalf? It's something that we, it's a habit that we have to develop, but we have to begin with this idea that we worship God no matter where we are, and no matter with what we have, whatever we have on hand, wherever we are at, whatever we can grab, that's something, if we're created enough, that we can worship God with. There are lots of good stories, and we continue to connect to people, uh, and to sh we can continue to share those stories with God. But one of the ways uh, that I heard recently is about a woman who was gardening. She was sharing about her love for gardening, how she loved spending time in the garden. And so she decided she wanted to praise God while she was gardening. And so she started doing this by basically singing songs. She would sing songs, she would memorize, use the time to memorize scripture as she was gardening, and that was a simple way that she worshipped God. As she kept doing this, she decided that, okay, as I'm doing this, I just don't want to do this on my own, and I'm going to go out of my way to invite others to come and join me in my gardening, and they can just sit and talk, they can sing songs, they can read psalms and poetry with me. Uh, it can be a, a multiple person event. And so she started inviting people, and some people came and some people didn't. And then she realized, well, maybe I don't need to stay here while I garden. I can go help uh, lots of other people need help with their garden and weeding. Weeding. And as I go to other people's houses and say, can I help you sometime with your gardening? I love to garden. She's able to build connections. And as she's doing that, she brings this whole lifestyle of gardening and worshiping God with her, and she's able to uh, invite people into this lifestyle, even though she's going to their gardens. She became a worshiping gardener. 
she's learned how to do this over the years in many creative ways. And I thought, oh, this is a great story about how someone who worships as they garden. We can worship. This is what Psalm 150 reminded us. This is how the Psalms end by reminding us, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Worship God wherever you are at and with whatever is on hand. Amen. Amen. Today is Wednesday, so I do remind you this is a day when we can gather together and bring uh, the items that we are collecting for our donation drives. In July, we are donating items or collecting items and donations for a local vets organization and for Alpine Academy. See our Facebook page for full details of what things you can bring. Bring them to door C on the south side underneath the overhang. The barrels are outside right now. Uh, you can drop items off in those barrels. As well as it is not too late to... Uh, uh, give a donation to the Invest in Kids Act. And uh, this is a great thing you can do. I've done it myself. You can take your state of Illinois tax dollars and you can uh, move them and help them provide a scholarship here at Alpine Academy. Uh, call the school, ask for Scott Dabson. He can give you instructions about how to do this. But the idea is that you're already paying taxes uh, throughout the year. You can divert some of those tax dollars and just say, I want those tax dollars to go to um, Alpine Academy as a scholarship. Um, you donate the scholarship and then you get a tax credit at the end of the year. Um, and that is a, a refund on your taxes, not a, a deduction, it's an actual tax credit. It's something to look into, it's a great way to do it. Numbers, numerous people at our church are doing it and you know our school is struggling financially because of the pandemic and its ramifications on society and so this is a great time to support our school with a donation to Alpine Academy through the Investing Kids Act uh, that helps provide scholarships for our students and is a tax credit for you. Call the school, ask for Scott, and you can have uh, get more specific information uh, about the steps to go out, uh, go about and do this. In the meantime, worship God with everything you have wherever you're at. Amen.